Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for joining us on the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Hey, super, how are you? Very, very good. I'm excited because we've got a fun guest coming up later in the program. I have Rosalind Y. Tompkins, and she's a published author of a couple of different books. Going to be talking about one called What Is It? Defining, Finding, and Obtaining Your It. And she's saying whatever it is that you want to go after, you first need to know what it is. Mm, and then once you know what it that is, makes sense. it's a whole lot easier. It's kind of like saying uh, if you don't know where you're going... How are you going to get there? You know, so I'm excited to chat with her. And, and I had an interview with her, or not an interview, a conversation with her already. Spunky lady. So I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, also, did you know, according to a new study, it shows that the sounds of barking actually raises the stress levels in dogs. So if you have dogs and they can hear other dogs barking, it starts to stress them out. I bet so. it really freaks them out when you're barking at them yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we do that all the time to our dogs. I'm we not do. quite sure why. Because we're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I have no good reason. That's my reason. All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get razors for $1 a month plus a few bucks shipping so you can enjoy fresh razors every month for as little as $3. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Thank you so much for tuning in on a Monday. Take a listen to this, Heidi. If patients visiting the emergency room of Oakwood Hospital in Dearborn, Michigan, don't see a doctor in 30 minutes or less that stipulates they'll get an apology... And a free movie pass. And their next visit is free. <laughs> That's great news. <laughs> Unless, of course, since you are at the emergency room, after all... You die. <laughs> because that's not going to do you a whole lot of good for a movie pass and a sorry when you're laying there dead. Huh. So Interesting. So 30 minutes or less, or you get a free movie pass and an apology. So what is the movie pass for? They say, hey, we're really busy. You might as well go see a movie. because <laughs> It's going to be you, at least two hours. You got some time. Uh, I think it's a good idea that they want to do something. but 30 minutes seems like a long time so for a wait time at an emergency room. I can tell you, I used to live right across the street. This is a long time ago. I lived across the street from an emergency room door, and there was traffic there 24 hours a day. You know, there's always people coming and going. So I can imagine that you know during their busy times, I bet there is a big holdup, you know, people mm. waiting. So there you go. Coming up, going to talk about bringing a waffle to a gunfight. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's on the way on the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. You don't want to bring a waffle to a gunfight. Yeah, next time you're eating at a waffle house, there's one on Paxville Highway in Manning, South Carolina. Don't mess with 29-year-old waitress Lakeisha Ward. I'm sorry, Yakisha Ward. You probably won't have a chance. She's in jail right now after a dispute with a customer. Ward got into an argument with the customer, Crystal Samuel. Samuel, uh, Samuel I'm sorry, I can't talk today. Samuel <laughs> allegedly ended up throwing a waffle at the waitress. That is when Ward jumped over the counter. Whoa. And she, and she said, uh, we got into it, as she put it. The fight moved outside where Ward got a gun from her car. Whoa. And while she didn't shoot Samuel, she did allegedly pistol whip her in the head. That was about the time the police rolled in to arrest Ward. As for Miss Samuel, she said only one thing about the Waffle House. Bad customer service. <laughs> That's exact quote. <laughs> no kidding. She pistol whipped you. <laughs> <laughs> and all you have to say is bad customer service. Yeah, that's, uh... I don't quite understand what led up to this, but I would give anything to have been in the booth next door to this. I mean, to see somebody throw a waffle in someone's face, because whatever the problem was. I would certainly. assume that there's a YouTube video on this out there somewhere. I don't know. I, uh, you know, I'm about afraid to even look. <laughs> when I do go on YouTube, I get stuck on there for like five hours. So, uh, but yeah, this happened at a... A Waffle House in uh, Paxville Highway, Manning, South Carolina. And the waitress gets to go to jail because she pistol whipped a customer. Yeah, and rightfully after so. After the customer threw a waffle in her face. <laughs> that is a story you can't make up. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. 
The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. If you're going to squat, don't grow pot. See, it it rhymes, and you could put that on a bumper sticker. (laughs) Uh, I'll tell you. Authorities in Lincoln, Nebraska, report a man called police for help, saying somebody was breaking into his apartment. When officers arrived, they found the apartment manager trying to get in to a unit that was supposed to be vacant. Police say the man had called uh, because he was living in the apartment, but he was living there illegally. He was squatting. Officers report finding three pounds of pot, equipment to use and grow it, and nearly $3,500 in cash. Allegedly, the squatter was busted. Here's my question. If he had $3,900 in cash, why not just rent the apartment? Right, exactly. Go get it. I'm sure it wasn't $3,900 a month for this apartment. Uh, $3,500 a month. There we are. $3,500 in cash. Sorry. It was in Lincoln, Nebraska. Again, they say if you're going to squat, don't grow pot. So there you go. Bad idea. But that's the kind of stuff you do when your brain is on drugs. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll-free at 1-844-204-1055. And we've got a moment of duh. Have you ever tested Burger King to see if they can, you know, if you really get it your way? Oh, I know. You have. (laughs) Turns out they don't really mean that in all circumstances. A man tried to walk through the drive-thru window at Burger King at Salt Lake City, Utah, about 9.30 last Monday, when the restaurant staff told him that they don't serve pedestrians at the window. The man beat on the glass, then stepped into a nearby payphone in sight of staff. He called the police and made a bomb threat on the Burger King. Whoa! Yeah, and, and made a bomb threat on Burger King. He was found a few minutes later and was arrested. So why not just walk inside and Yeah, order I mean, the if food? you're there anyway, go in. It was 9.30 at night. Would they have been closed Maybe they already? closed. Maybe that location closes and only the drive-thru is open. Because I know and that a lot of fast case, food places, just the drive-thru is open. Let him order at the stupid window. But it's a safety thing. They probably can't for insurance reasons. Liability reasons. That. Somebody in the drive-thru lane, if they would get hit and... and and yeah, the yeah, company to allows people to do that on a regular well, basis. Well, there, there should be some other plan for people who are pedestrians then. All I know is I think it's, it's kind of silly that he... Why would you call the police and make a bomb threat on that Burger King? I'm bombing the Burger King because he wouldn't serve me food. <laughs> <laughs> Can you describe the man? Yeah, he's on our surveillance video. <laughs> he's the one we wouldn't serve food to. In the drive-thru. <laughs> All right, we've got your scoop of the day coming up on this Monday on the John and Heidi Show. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now, your Scoop of the Day. Security at an airport in China heard something. They heard, please do not open me. I'm just normal luggage. (laughs) That was coming from inside luggage. They discovered there was a speaker playing the message on a loop. The owner of the luggage told authorities he she did it to protect her cosmetics. Okay. That that is only going to make somebody say we have to open this suitcase. Nothing quite like drawing attention. Wow. You know, make a note on the outside of the thing saying cosmetics, leave them alone, you know, whatever. Don't put a a, a continuous loop tape saying do not open me. I'm just regular luggage. <laughs> sure, no problems there. All right, Heidi, you have to answer this. Uh, I'm going to ask a question here. According to recent news reports, what animal should children not keep as a pet? I'm going to give you a list, and they're all on the uh, list, and you got to tell me the, the last one. You're not supposed to have hamsters or baby chicks or lizards or turtles or what's the last one on the list? Can Snakes. You tell me? No, hedgehogs. Oh. A new report says young children should not keep hedgehogs as a pet or hamsters or baby chicks or Why? lizards or turtles, for that matter, because of risk of disease. According to the nation's leading pediatric group, exotic pets carry dangerous and sometimes potentially... Hamsters are exotic pets? Mm -hmm, Apparently. The report says uh, these pets are more prone than cats and dogs to bite you and scratch you as well. And it puts your children, particularly under age five, at risk. They're vulnerable because of their immune systems... And they put their things in their mouth quite often. So if you're playing with this little pet and then you're putting your fingers in your mouth, so you're supposed to, if you have kids under the age of five, avoid non-traditional pets. This report is from the 
American Academy of Pediatrics and Fun Haters of America, apparently. No, they're just trying to be they're trying to say be safe out there. So that's why many public places where like petting zoos and things, you won't see these kind of animals. My brother had they, hamsters growing up all the time. I yeah. think he had two I killed one. <laughs> well, how would you kill a hamster? <laughs> I, well, I didn't mean to. <laughs> sure you did. I fed it dog food and apparently it doesn't <laughs> agree with the hamster. Oh, oh he was I, mad at me. I I killed Hermie. All right. Hey, a new study shows the <laughs> happiest parents are the ones with four or more children. We need to have two more kids. <laughs> we got stuck with just two. All right. The University of California is considering a ban on expressions of intolerance. What? I don't know what that is. What's an expression, expression of intolerance? Expression of intolerance? Like, I hate this, or I don't like this, or... Well, they're going to ban that in California, at the University of California. Good oh, luck. That's super. Scientists have developed an ultra-thin, flexible material that can wrap around an object and make it invisible. Ooh! How cool is this? Yeah, science making ultra-thin things invisible since 2015. A man from England, Lincolnshire to be quite precise, is in jail after leading officers on a 100-mile-per-hour chase. After his arrest, the 24-year-old revealed that he had never taken a driving test. He learned how to drive on his PlayStation game system. Oh, my. Yeah, so that's how he learned. A uh, recent analyst, analysis rather, from the University of Cambridge found that uh, more than 500 million junk messages, email addresses, start with A, M, S, R, or P, and they got more than 40% of all spam. On the other hand, email addresses beginning with Q, Y, and Z got only 20%. So they're saying if you want to have less spam, start your email address with a Q, a Y, or a Z. Huh. Which makes it harder for everybody. So, what is your email address? Z John Small. <laughs> v, no, not the Z. Yeah, I don't even want to try that. Does demolishing a salty bag of potato chips seem to put you in a better mood? No. Mm. Well, you're not alone if it, if it does. According to psychologists at the University of Iowa, they say salt may be nature's antidepressant. Researchers found that rats were deficient in sodium and they avoided activities that they normally enjoyed. So, they're saying. If you want to chow down a whole bag of chips, that might make you feel better, according to that. Hey, in Australia, it is illegal to roam the streets wearing black clothing, felt shoes, and black shoe polish on your face, as these are (laughs) items and tools of a cat burglar. So they are illegal in Australia. Uh Uh-huh. There you go. That's your strange law. This has been your Scoop of the Day. This portion of the program is brought to you by RoughToughKennels.com. Dog kennels and accessories sent to your front door wherever you live. Your dog deserves it. Learn more at RoughToughKennels.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. We've got a special guest on the telephone line right now, somebody that's made a difference in a lot of people's lives. We have Dr. Rosalind Y. Tompkins joining us. She's an author, and she's just an all-around cool person. Dr. Rosalind Y. Tompkins, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Well, we're excited to chat with you here. You've got a book out, your most recent book, What Is It? But before we get to that, let's kind of go back to the beginning and talk about your past and, and what brought you to the point that you're at right now. Uh, where would be a good place to start? Wow, that's a loaded question. But <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess starting with, uh, with my addiction and then my subsequent recovery, that, that is what really is the catalyst for everything that I've done. Since. What year would you say it was when you started on your recovery path? In 1987. I'm almost 30 years uh, clean. And, uh, and I'm telling you, I've covered a lot of territory in those the past three decades. Now, before you got on your path to recovery, let's talk about what your life was like way back then. Okay. Well, you know, it was, uh, it was a, it's a typical story uh, in so many, unfortunately, so many lives, and even including today. I started smoking marijuana at, uh, when I was in middle school, around 12 years old. And then it escalated, and during that time, the drug of choice was uh, cocaine. So by the time I was 17 years old and I came to Tallahassee for, for college, I started my first line. And then I ended up uh, experimenting with crack cocaine and, and all of that. And, and through that long spiral down, I found my way back. And that was through my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Awesome. Now, 
what what was rock bottom for you? How did you know that you were at rock bottom? What was there an event that happened or something that happened that made you say, I, I need to change things? Well, John, I tell you, I feel like I feel like I was a bottomless pit. There were so many things that, that happened and that is chronicled in my book as long as there's breath in your body there's hope. But I guess the last thing was whenever I I got pregnant with my daughter, uh, and uh, and I realized that uh, that okay this is it. You need to get your life together and uh, just stop all the foolishness. So that was my last bottom, and, and that was the last time I ever used uh, was during that season. And now she is, she'll be 28 next year. <laughs> that is awesome. Now we're going to talk about your books here uh, in, in a moment, but first there's a, an organization that you started that has helped thousands of people. Let's talk about that. Mothers in Crisis. Mothers in Crisis, I called it my baby of hope. Because in addition to my, my daughter, Zinar, uh, my baby of hope, Mothers in Crisis, is also what kind of kept me busy and kept me clean. And we'll be celebrating 25 years in April of 2016. It's a nonprofit, community based, faith based organization that helps families who are overcoming, who wants to overcome drug and alcohol addiction. And I'm telling you, over the years, we have, we have done amazing things in this community of Tallahassee, the capital of Florida. That's awesome. And uh, thank you so much for what you've done for so many families and helped them. Now, let's talk about your books. We'll start with As Long As There Is Breath In Your Body, There Is Hope. When did that book come out? That came out in 2005. And, uh, and I, it's a timeless book because basically... Not only do I share some of the things that I went through, I call it the hellhole of addiction. And uh, I lost my mind on several occasions during that time. John, it just wasn't pretty. I, I ended up uh, having a stillborn, and, uh, and then I finally made it to the door of hope. And through that, I was able to come out with what I call eight pearls of wisdom. So I share those eight pearls of wisdom, and as long as there's breath in your body, there's hope. And it, it, it also has helped a lot of people uh, along the way and continues to do so. And you've got a new book out, What Is It? Now, let's talk about that book. What is it? And that, that is Defining, Finding, and Obtaining Your It. And in that book, I talk about how passion is what drives purpose. And uh, I relate it to how when I was an addict, I had passion to do what I needed to do in order to get the drugs. And then whenever I got clean, I had to have that same type of passion in order to uh, uh, remain clean and also to help others. So in the book, What Is It?, it helps you to define what your passions are and also how to obtain them. So if there's somebody listening right now that maybe they themselves have an issue with addiction or they might have a loved one that has an issue with addiction, what would you give them for advice uh, what would you say, here's a good place to at least get started? Where, where should they go first? Well, I'm known as uh, as a doctor of hope, and that's where I get my trademark saying, as long as there's breath in your body, there's hope. So I would have to say, first of all, don't give up hope. Sometimes it seems like it's a, it's a lost cause or maybe there's been many ups and downs, but you have to have hope and believe. You have to have faith, and then just seek out the help that's available. Pray about it and don't give up, whatever happens. That's one thing I say about my mother. Uh, God bless her soul now. She's, she's on the other side, but she never gave up on me. Uh, you got to be there. you got to have someone in your corner that's going to pray for you. It's going to love you through the hell that you're going through. That's awesome. Yeah, so don't give up hope. Now, Dr. Yeah. Rosalind Y. Tompkins is who we're talking to right now. Dr. Tompkins, where can we go if we'd like to find a copy of the books that we talked about? You can go, well, you can get all of the books, all of my books on Amazon. And uh, you can also go to my website, uh, www.rosalindwhitetompkins.com. And it, it has all of my books there as well. Well, we're going to send folks over there because I know that there are people that listen to the program that, that probably do have a need, uh, whether it's something that they're dealing with themselves or maybe a loved one that is dealing with that. Uh, we're going to send them over there to hopefully find the help that they need and, and live a better life. Congratulations on almost 30 years now. How cool is that? How does that feel to look at that and say, you know, 30 years I've been able to do this? Well, you know, I, I am humbled by it because as, as anyone in recovery knows, it's one day at a time. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm loving my life. It, it has gotten 
so much better, and uh, I wouldn't trade anything. So it's a, it's a wonderful place to be. And also, as I'm still helping those that are that are uh, going through problems, mainly Molly. Molly is a big deal here in, in this area. And, as you know, that's the uh, ecstasy, MDMA drug. And many of our young adults, uh, uh, both men and women, are, are experimenting and, and just getting strung out on that drug. Well, thank you for doing what you're doing to help. We really appreciate you doing that. And thank you again for your time to chat with us today. Well, thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed it and uh, look forward to coming back sometime. Would love to have that. Again, Dr. Rosalind Y. Tompkins. You can learn more on her website, rosalindytompkins.com. If you're looking for the books, buy them wherever you buy your books, and I'll bet you'll be able to find them uh, on Amazon and uh, all the big websites out there. Find a copy and check it out. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. This portion of the program is brought to you by CarsForSale.com. If you're in the market to buy a car, truck, or van, find thousands of vehicles to choose from at CarsForSale.com. Today is a very special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. Today is Monday, the 19th day of October. It is Evaluate Your Life Day. Mm. It's also Hagfish Day today. So happy What's Hagfish a hagfish? Day. hagfish? I don't know, but it's Hagfish Day. Information Overload Day. Ooh, I have that day a lot. Uh, medical Assistance Recognition today, Day is today. So if you are a medical assistant, hey, I recognize you. Also, support your local Chamber of Commerce Day. Ooh, hey, we should call. We've got friends that work at a Chamber of Commerce. We'll call and wish them a happy day. And it's National Unity Day. So get out there and celebrate by having some hagfish, if that's something you eat. <laughs> if it's not something you eat, then avoid the hagfish. <laughs> it's also, like I said, Evaluate Your Life Day. I've got some evaluating to do. <laughs> it's funny that that would land on a Monday. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on this Monday, the 19th day of October. This portion of the program is brought to you by StoneGroupArchitects.com. It's more than a building. It's design and function working together. Check out the project portfolio at StoneGroupArchitects.com. Finally, after years of trying, I have for you scientific research that listening to the John and Heidi Show can help you live longer. Are you ready? Oh, I am. This is good stuff, folks. I mean, whatever you're doing right now, stop and pay attention. Researchers in Copenhagen, Denmark, say you can add 20 years to your life and enjoy better health just by laughing. They say uh, a good belly laugh once a day is as good for your heart as an hour of aerobic exercise. See? Ah, so we do work out every day. I do. I laugh at least once a day, a good belly laugh. Uh, Here are some tips on how you can laugh longer and harder to add years to your life. Number one on the list. Listen to the John and Heidi show. No, that's not really on here. Uh, Number one on the list says collect jokes. Funny stories not only get you laughing, they also get your friends laughing too. Listening to jokes and telling them will add minutes of laughter every day. Next, see a funny movie or TV show. Comedies tickle your funny bone and they provide you with endless hours of delight. So watch something funny, whether it's a movie or a TV show. We just watched Spaceballs the other day. That was very funny. Uh, read the funnies. There's enough zany characters in the comics and every single day to guarantee at least one or two good laughs. Next, find a funny friend. Anyone who delights you and makes you giggle is worth their weight in gold. Now, if you're choosing me, I just want, I want you to understand, I'm not worth my weight in gold. That would be a lot of gold. <laughs> <That's> and a, <laughs> a lot of your jokes kind of create groans, oh, not come belly on. laughs. I get, get some like, belly oh. laughs. I get some belly yeah, the other day, by the way, we were watching uh, <laughs> The Muppets, and we were talking about who each Muppet was. Heidi says she's Gonzo. She says, I'm Fozzie. I am so Kermit. I am not Fozzie. <laughs> waka, waka, waka. <laughs> Next, do something silly. Go to an amusement park. Go roller skating. Wear a goofy hat. You'll find plenty of laughs if you just loosen up a little. Next, hang out with kids. They know how to laugh, and they'll make you laugh as well. And the last thing, listen to John and Heidi. Now, that's still not on <laughs> But it would be if we were in Copenhagen, Denmark. There you go. That's some things to do to add some years to your life just by laughing a little bit. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Okay, there might be times when you go to get a haircut and people say, wow, it looks like your barber or your hairdresser had a blindfold on. Well, take a listen to this. Bar from India claims to have cut hair blindfolded for the last 20 years. 
without ever injuring a customer. Oh, yeah. Jala- well. Jalandi is one of the most popular hairdressers in the town of Indoor. Says he started wearing a blindfold to do something different. Initially, after cutting his finger a few times, he eventually got the hang of it. And now customers say he cuts their hair just the way they, they want it, even though he can't even see them. But anybody wanting to have their hair cut by Jalani has to be prepared to pay a bit. A blindfolded haircut costs ten times as much as a usual haircut. Why would you want that? I don't know. But they, he charges ten times more, and he's got people lined up out the door. Wow. So the guy must be good. He can do it with his eyes closed. Well, his eyes might be open, but he's wearing a blindfold, so <laughs> I'm not sure. I would like to see what his work looks like. Just to, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just picturing in my mind. Uh, that could be bad. That could be really bad. But I guess he does it all by touch. He feels, no, oh, you're a little shaggy here. Oh, a little oh, spot here. Touch, yeah, touch, touch. Yeah, that's just bizarre. Boom, snip, snip, snip. You're done. Ten times as much as the other guy. All right, coming up, a woman pretends to get pregnant and then pretends your child dies oh. to make a profit. Oh, oh. yeah. There, there's some interesting folks in this world, and we've got one in the news coming up. This portion of the program is brought to you by GunUp.com. If you're a gun lover, you'll be in heaven at GunUp.com. Built by experienced military veterans, shooting sports competitors, and publishing professionals, they have awesome stories and articles that are read by millions of gun enthusiasts. Check it out at GunUp.com. Very disappointing story here from Anchorage, Alaska. A woman pled no contest to theft. And here's why she's saying that she didn't do, oh, I didn't steal anything. But here's why she was being charged with theft. She faked a pregnancy in order to get gifts from her friends and coworkers. <sighs> Erica uh, Duran, I think I say this, 24, told friends and coworkers she was pregnant. She got more than $500 worth of cash and gifts. What's worse is she then arranged a memorial service and made up uh, for her made up twins. The Anchorage Daily News says her attorney said she lied about being pregnant because her husband put pressure on her to become pregnant. So she pretended to be pregnant, and then she pretended that she lost her children, and she had $500 worth of gifts oh. in the midst of all this. And I just think that's really, really sad that that would happen. I mean, can you imagine? I, that's just... It takes such, all kinds to make the world go round. Well, and that's just such a, such a mean thing to do because... You know, I don't know. I'll just move on because I, I think that I think that that's a bad that's a bad thing. <laughs> Everybody, I'm gonna I'm gonna just stop. Coming up, we're gonna talk about the best egg sandwich you've ever heard of. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just one dollar, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Heidi, have you ever thought, my life is kind of boring? No, I can honestly say that I've never had a moment where I thought my life is boring. Well, I'm just just thinking that this guy from Belgium might think that once in a while. Listen to this. He's the egg sandwich guy. He's 54. He's from Belgium. He's eaten an egg sandwich every day for the last 38 years, and he's got thousands of photos to prove it. What? Otto, <laughs> Why? Uh, Otto Vernman started this strange habit 38 years ago as a college stunt. And he photographed himself every day over the years eating 12,000 egg sandwiches. And he's on a a streak. Every day he wakes up, he makes an egg sandwich, and he snaps a photo of him eating an egg sandwich. I am glad I'm not friends with this guy on Facebook. (laughs) I can only imagine. If that is your hobby. Is he going for some kind of a world record? I don't know. I would assume he's already got it. I would assume so too, because nobody else would care that much. No. Is there anybody out there who's like, oh, I'm going to do this for 38 years? How long has he been doing it? Yeah, 38 years. Every day for 38 years. So for 38 years, he's had an egg sandwich for breakfast every single morning. Now, I got nothing against egg sandwiches, I think they're good. But he started taking photos of these 38 years ago every day for 38 years. Yeah, that's just bizarre. So, he, again, if he's trying to set a record, I guess maybe he's got that going. But uh, I've got friends who will post a photo once in a while of their food on Facebook. And I have I'm like, friends why? that photograph almost everything that they eat I just don't and share it on why. Facebook. I've never been into that. If you're one of those people that shares food, you'll have to let me know. Why do you do that? Because I eat it. Don't, don't take pictures <laughs> of it. I love food, but I don't want to look at pictures of it. And this guy's got 12,000 photos. Maybe he could put out a coffee table book. 
that nobody would buy. <laughs> Who would want that? All right. We do have some good news coming your way here in just a short bit on the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by Direct TV. Call 1-800-259-7646. They have hundreds of channels to choose from with many packages to fit your viewing desires. Learn more at 1-800-259-7646. I always like to end the program with some good news, Heidi. We always try to find something. Sometimes it's hard to find, but today it wasn't so hard. Found something really nice here. A company called eSight is changing the way people who are legally blind can see the world. Glasses that use a small video camera to record what the user user with limited vision is looking at, and then they enhance the image based on the user's needs. The video is then played back on screens in the glasses, creating an improved and magnified image tailored to each individual's vision abilities. Veteran Mark Cornell is one of the uh, one example. After being not being able to see anything for about twenty years, eSight allowed him to discover what his loved ones really looked like. So it's such a cool thing. He puts on these glasses that, again, he's legally blind, but with these glasses he can actually see because of the technology that we have today. How awesome must that be? Hmm. That I'm just trying one? to picture exactly what this is i'm having a hard time envisioning for people who are legally blind where they 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 can see like a little bit but not these are glasses that they put on if you want to see the video i have it on our facebook page and it's a it's a cool video the it's a way for them to see even though they have limited vision this enhances their limited vision so they can actually see what was the show we watched this summer um america's got talent okay you know the one yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) i know the kid there was a a, a kid that was dancing he was wearing Google glasses. I think that's what it was. He was wearing something like that. Yeah, I don't think And he had was. limited vision. And with those glasses, he was able to do a whole lot more. So it's similar to that, I think. Mm. So anyway, it's, I think it's a really cool thing. It amazes me what good can be done when people work on things that are good, like this. Meanwhile, you know, we read about stories where scientists are doing surveys and, and studies on things that don't even matter. I'm like, I don't understand why that matters. Focus on stuff like this enhancing the people who have limited vision, enhancing their lives. What an awesome thing that is. That is cool. That is good news. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow right here on the John and Heidi Show. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. And your bonus break is brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club, where you can go if you'd like to get some razors at a discount, and they'll never, ever, ever make you go all the way to the store to get them. All you got to do, go to their website, and they'll ship them right to your mailbox. It's a really cool way to shave, and it's also going to help you save money, and it's going to help you save time. And you'll have razors when you need them, rather than, oh, no, I need those. I have to put them on my list and maybe remember next week or the following week. Hey, that reminds me. I need some deodorant, Heidi. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Let's put that on my uh, – why don't they have a deodorant shave club, <laughs> <laughs> a dollar deodorant club or something? Anyway, if you would like to save time and save money, get some awesome razors at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. All right. Let's take a look at this. It says here, early research – oh, I'm using the wrong mouse. <laughs> here, let me give you your mouse back. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Early research on mice with cancer show the, that fasting may weaken tumors and help chemotherapy work better. While it remains unknown if the same approach could work in humans or if it would even be safe, researchers say findings suggest a promising new route of study for improving, improving response to cancer treatment. So they're saying fasting. Uh, but people are usually f- – oh, ahead of time. I was yeah. going to say people are usually ill from chemotherapy anyway, so they don't. Much, They're saying but. fasting in advance. All right. Researchers at Northwestern University are developing a smartphone that can sense whether you're falling victim to depression. Psychologist David Moore has been adapting phones as a virtual therapist for patients prone to depression. He says if somebody is sitting at home for days on end feeling depressed, the phone can sense it. It can provide them an automated text message or an automated phone call to make a suggestion to give somebody a call or to get out of the house. Dr. Moore says tests with eight patients so far, have shown that the phone therapist can be very helpful in lifting their moods. So that's kind of cool. Hmm. Next, a security guard caught a teenage burglar napping in an armchair just before dawn at a medical college. This was in Malaysia. Police in the city were called in after the man, a factory worker, was discovered sound asleep. 
and his loot was laying next to him. Officials say the burglar's haul was about $530 worth of audiovisual equipment. He did not get it because he was too tired to leave. Fell (laughs) asleep. Fell asleep. I don't understand that. How many times now? Several times we've read stories about people. Yeah, if you are going to go and rob somebody, you might want to take a nap before you go. Or at least get out of there before you take the nap. All right, Kevin Chirag was charged in Highland Heights, Kentucky, with eight gas station robberies when police finally found a witness who could identify him and his getaway car. It was one of the license plate that had his last name on it, Chigag. So they were like, well, it was this car, and his license plate said S-H-E-G-O-G, and they checked, and that was Kevin Chigag's license plate, and they're like, huh, maybe it's him. <laughs> And the law is the law. Whether you think it's the law is for the birds or not, Helen Smith thinks that one particular law in her neighborhood really is for the birds, or at least against the birds, or against her, whatever. Miss Smith is scheduling to go before a judge because she's been cited for feeding birds. She does it in her own yard, the same yard she's done it in since she was a little girl. She's now 86. But no matter, it is against city code now to feed birds, so she's going to court. If found guilty, she could be fined up to 1000 bucks, And of course... (sighs) Mrs. Smith thinks the law is the most ridiculous thing she's ever heard. But neighbors are complaining that her feeding these birds is attracting rodents, too, and causing unsanitary conditions. So they're saying, hey, oh, just I don't want that be. old lady feeding the birds in the neighborhood. Good Lord. Yeah, leave her alone. Where was that? Uh, that was Mrs. Smith in, let me see, it doesn't say. Helen Smith is her name. So you'll have to Google it if you want well, to know. Well, Helen, you keep on feeding those birds. Yeah, and I tell you what. I really wish that I could, you know what, maybe we could set up a Kickstarter campaign to help her pay that fine. Yeah. That'd be a cool thing to do. I remember First, one time you were getting yelled at at a resort. We oh were yeah. feeding birds french fries. Fr- yeah, I threw a french fry. <laughs> we were sitting at a resort and, and there were birds like swooping down, picking up french fries. And I had a plate of fries that I was not eating. And we thought eating. it was cute. So I threw a bird, a, a french fry. And this is, I'm like, sit back, relax. And this is so funny. <laughs> do you remember what happened? Oh, I remember. <laughs> sit back, relax, and just kind of having fun. And this guy comes over and starts yelling at me, and I stood up. I really wasn't trying to be intimidating, but I'm much, much, much bigger than he was. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, uh, no, it's not a big deal, really. If you guys want to... I'm a lounge those, singer. Come to my show. He's like, yeah, I'm singing in the lounge tonight if you want to come in. And <laughs> It was funny. Heidi was laughing so hard. She's like, that was so funny when you stood up. Yeah. I only stood up because I was kind of like leaned back, and he's talking to me, and my neck was twisted in a really weird angle when I'm trying to talk to him. So I stood up, but he thought I was like trying to come at him <laughs> i was like what's going on now he's like yeah no it's not really a problem you really, if, you, if you want to feed those birds that's really none of my business I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what i was thinking <laughs> all right i think that's that's gonna do it for our bonus break that's that's quite a bit your bonus break brought to you by the dollar shave club learn more <laughs> gonna get a call from a lounge singer learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio